It's seriously just a great time for handheld gaming these days. While there were plenty of attempts at handheld PCs for gaming on the go, it's pretty easy to say that the most accessible and ultimately most popular gaming handhelds are still the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck. Enter ASUS, who decided to bring their computing expertise and bring everything down to a handheld that has managed to capture more attention than many competitors. I've had it for about a month now, and after sharing with you a great couple first days with it, I want to give you more thoughts and share with you some of the tools that I have used to expand the experience. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the ASUS ROG Ally and some accessories, as you can see already, that I have for it. Now, quick disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Trend Micro, and we're going to get into that a little bit later as part of the tea break. But for now, I just want to start the video off by talking about one of the most important parts of any portable device protection. ROG made sure to have some first-party accessories already available once the Ally hit store shelves. And for now, I think this is still one of the best options for carrying the Ally while providing a little bit of protection. This has all of the stylings that you would expect from ROG with the logo right here on the front, uh, and then the Republic of Gamers words that are all around this, uh, this zipper area. Now, I will say that this case is not particularly padded, so if you are looking for the utmost in protection, you may have to look elsewhere. Personally, I'm pretty careful with my gadgets, so I think until something else comes along that really catches my eye, this is probably gonna be the one that I stick with. There are indentations for the thumbstick, so it's not like getting mashed into the body. And then there's this flap that's really thin, so the only thing I can think of is to put micro SD cards in here, uh, but you can take this Velcro area and bring it down to this Velcro area, and then uh, the case becomes a, uh, a bit of like a stand of sorts. It's not the best one, I'll admit, but sometimes it does get the job done. But aside from this flap, my one problem with this case is that there's not really much room for literally anything else. Not the charging cable or any of the other accessories that I am going to be talking about. Although I suppose you can say that this next accessory fits in the case because it's just a screen protector. I personally am all about adding a little bit of extra layering to the nice screen on the ROG Ally, so if something does poke at the case while I'm traveling, at least there's a little bit more armor on top. This one is easily found on Amazon and is your rather typical screen protector in terms of material and application. I actually wanted to get the D brand screen protectors, but I haven't gotten my hands on them yet, so for now, this one will do. And honestly, I don't really foresee myself having to take this one off, um, at least not for a while. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already clued into it, I have links for all of these products down in the description. Some of them are available on Amazon and others are found at Best Buy, which is still currently the main place that you can get the Ally in the US, at least for now. All right, I'm gonna take a breather and make a cup of tea, but during this tea break, as I mentioned, I do have a sponsor for this video, so let's pop it over to the sponsor, Trend Micro. I wanna give a big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. We're all over the place these days, whether working from home, the cafe, the office, and everywhere in between. That means our devices are connected to any number of Wi-Fi networks, and that opens up our data and information to potential danger. That's where Trends Micro comes in with their premium security suite, which can keep you covered from all angles. And yes, that means even on something like the ROG Ally, which is essentially a portable PC that you can bring anywhere. You get maximum security on up to 10 devices, whether they are PC, Mac, on Android or iOS, and a complete set of security apps helps to give protection from malware, intrusion, and even our own overly simplistic passwords. Those apps include an always-on anti-malware protection layer, a password manager, and a VPN. Now, personally, the VPN Proxy One Pro app has been especially useful because I've been relying on public and hotel internet a lot over the last few weeks. And if you're not using a VPN when you're connecting to something like a cafe's Wi-Fi, you really should. By encrypting the connection on every device, you're kept from prying eyes and malicious websites. You could set it to always be on or let the app diagnose any Wi-Fi network to determine if the VPN needs to be activated. It's just one of the many ways Trend Micro can keep you safe in their comprehensive premium security suite. Check out the links in the description below and use the code Joshua10 to get 10% off your purchase. Get protected with the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite across all of your devices and thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. All right, let's talk about the Ally in general, since I've been using it quite a bit over the last few weeks. Namely, the things I do want to talk about here are maybe some of the bugs and problems, and then I'll give some thoughts about the Ally in general. First off, there's that issue that the micro SD cards have been getting fried due to the high temperatures while playing at high wattages. The thing is, I'm personally not the kind of gamer that loads every single game that I possibly can on every handheld. I work within the bounds of the hard drive that's included here, and yes, that means I haven't even updated or upgraded the hard drive that's in here. So really what I do 
is I just put a few games on here that I really want to focus on and finish right at this moment. And right now, I'm really obsessed with getting better at Street Fighter 6. I main Manon and Jamie, and then when I take breaks from the rage-inducing fighting game, uh, I would play either Star Wars Jedi Survivor or WWE 2K23. And all of that is just internally stored rather than on an SD card. But with all that said, I know that ASUS has been working to put out update after update to mitigate these issues, uh, so that is good to see. But the thing that BIOS or firmware updates can't really fix uh, is the battery life. I'm about to go on a couple of trips, and I'm definitely going to be bringing the ROG Ally with me for plane rides and for downtime at those destinations, but I know, I just know that this is not going to survive a trip to New York from LA, much less a long-haul flight all the way to Asia. As I mentioned, I've been playing Street Fighter 6 the most lately, and that means online matches. Time flies when you're getting beat, but instead of rage quitting, I'm forced to take a break because the Ally tells me it's low on battery at around the two-hour mark. Now, I think that there could be longer battery life if I'm on, like, airplane mode, and definitely more if I'm playing something less intensive, but the fact remains that a power bank, or at least a good charger, is going to be required. And that's where my favorite travel power bank comes in. Zenger makes some incredible charging products, and the Super Tank Pro might be their best one. Not only does this bank go right up to the limit that is acceptable on planes, there are four fast charging USB-C ports to charge more than just the Ally all at once. Now, when you're using just one of those ports for charging, it can max out at 100 watts, which is perfect for powering the Ally and charging it while playing some games. The power output goes down when you're spreading the charge among multiple products, and you will see what your output is via that LCD screen. You'll also notice that my Super Tank Pro looks a little different from the one you might see in my link down below. That's because I've had this one for a long time, and Zenger have done some minor updates, but it's still the same beast of a power bank. Now, staying plugged in while gaming is the most ideal for long play sessions, and the included charger is good for that, but why not get something that can expand the experience? This one is actually an official ASUS product, and not only does it provide similar 65 watt charging to the charger that comes with the Ally, it also has an HDMI port, which makes the Ally into a full-blown TV console. I've used this on multiple televisions already with mostly positive results. There was only one or two televisions that for some reason could not get uh, the audio coming from the Ally to it. You'll also see there's a USB-A port here too, primarily to connect any peripherals like mice or keyboard or controllers. Uh, the only thing is these ports, uh, the HDMI and the uh, USB, they're both 2.0. So if you're looking for like USB 3.1, 3.2, or even HDMI 2.1, unfortunately, um, this does not support all of that. I'm not sure if that actually changes the experience. It doesn't seem so because most of the time I just play games at 1080, 60 anyway. And honestly, this charger is the one that I make sure to have on me at all times, not just because it is still a proper charging solution, but because it also opens up the possibility to game on a TV, which is great for a hotel room or even a general gaming setup like on a desk. But much like the other official ASUS products, the ROG charger dock is mainly available at Best Buy. And if you're unable to find one there, um, I did find an alternative that is basically the same thing available on Amazon. This one is from AceFast. And this charging dock does all of the same things and seems to have the exact same functionality, right down to the small issue I had where just one TV, for whatever reason, wouldn't output audio from the Ally. Uh, you have the USB-C port here, um, and then the USB-A port, which in this case does seem to be a 3.0 port, and then finally that, that HDMI port for 4K60 gaming. And finally, if you want to go a little bit crazier with the docking solutions, you can always go for a proper multi-dock like this one from Basius. Basius? Basius? I'm not too sure. But in any case, it's actually a pretty good one because it packs down quite neatly, as you can see here, um, complete with a kickstand that folds out. But when you're not using it, uh, it can always just come down to this nice, easy shape right here. Uh, although the cable does stick out a little bit. Luckily, this cable feels really sturdy. It's got a very rigid feel to it, uh, and it's not too flimsy, which is really good. And it just slots in nicely over here in this little port. Uh, that way you could just travel with it nice and easily. You will still need the provided charger or anything that can put out up to 100 watts, but after that, you have the ability to add a bunch of different ports, from three USB-A ports all the way over to an Ethernet port, and of course, that 4K60 HDMI port. It is still pretty travel-friendly, but for the most part, I use this dock here in the office, uh, much like a Nintendo Switch where the dock just sits at my TV here. This one sits right next to it, and I have two different ways of just getting a bunch of games onto my office TV when I take a break. To be fair, when I do this, I end up playing way too much, and I don't get as much work done, but that's a me problem. 
What's a bit more of an ROG Ally problem is the fact that the jank here is still quite present. One thing I have to give the Steam Deck a lot of credit for is how it manages to feel more like a seamless, portable gaming console. And in comparison, the ROG Ally, as you can see here, feels less like a dedicated gaming console and more like a Windows miniaturized PC, right down to it being basically like a Windows tablet. And the best way for me to describe what it's like on the ROG Ally outside of a game, well, Windows tablets are not that great to use, right? That's basically how this one feels at times. After all, that's what the Ally and a lot of its competitors are, for better or worse. They are miniaturized Windows PCs. And like any Windows computer, it takes a lot of effort to make sure that you have everything set up exactly the way that you want to, especially if you're only going to be using it on its own. That's why Docs and all of these other uh, solutions to add ports to the ROG Ally, uh, they are kind of needed, especially if you're going to get down in the weeds and need something like extra peripherals, keyboards, or mice. And it has the same level of PC anxiety that you would have, uh, making sure that nothing is running in the background, hindering performance, or that nothing is going to pop up that will knock you out of any game. And if you're docked, it's really annoying to just have to go over to the ally and address all of those little quibbles before you can get back to your game. I personally can't tell you how many times I've had to unplug the ally from one of these many docks so that I can hit like an X button on a window or minimize a pop up or get into the quick settings to change up a couple of things so that it works well enough on my TV. And especially if you have the projection settings to second screen only, this is a dance that you might have to do more often than you would like. While the fact that full windows is on here and that opens up a ton of possibilities for the ROG Ally, the fact remains that, well, this is like a small, tiny laptop with a touchscreen. And when something goes wrong, the jank of a less than seamless experience is honestly just irksome. You introduce some of that jank once you connect other things to it, but once you get past those, like, let's say hurdles, uh, the experience can be relatively painless. After all, I've played in hotels with the dock connected to the room's television. I've played handheld in bed like I suspect many of us do the most. I've even gamed while in a medical facility's waiting room using a wireless hotspot from my Pixel Fold, which actually got me some solid matches in Street Fighter VI. I was worried that this D-pad uh, would be a nuisance because I am trained in PlayStation controllers specifically, and actually the old D-pads of the Super Nintendo controllers were the ones I used for Street Fighter 2. And while it's not my favorite fighting game methodology, the controls on the ROG Ally are actually more than adequate. If I lose, and I do lose a lot, it's clearly my fault. Which brings me to my final accessory that I wanted to include in this video, this controller, the 8-bit Doe. Pro 2. 8-bit do, 8-bit do, whatever the case may be, it's like a PS2 controller and an SNES gamepad were mashed together, and as far as Bluetooth controllers are concerned, it's still one of my favorites. It connects to the Ally just like it would on any PC, and as you can see I have it connected right now, and I just play this while the Ally is docked to my office TV or honestly anywhere else if I travel with it. And this D-pad is exactly what I was talking about, it is great for my Street Fighter 6 play sessions. And final note on the controller, uh, mine still works really well, but as you can see and maybe here, <laughs> it has seen better days. It's been a long time since I dropped or threw a controller, but being in like gold or platinum rank in Street Fighter 6, sometimes it can just do that to you. And so there you have it. Some accessories to expand your ROG Ally experience, even if there are a few quibbles to contend with along the way. Just like I said in my previous video, I personally really enjoy what ASUS has done here, creating a good portable Windows-based gaming experience that still has its quirks, but manages to avoid any major deal breakers. I've been on the Ally ever since getting it, and as far as the comparison between the Ally and the Steam Deck, I actually don't have any super strong feelings in either direction. Any game that I've wanted to play handheld works on either device, but it's on the Ally that I can actually access my Xbox Game Pass Ultimate library, which is something the Steam Deck still cannot do. So when games I want to play hit Game Pass, the choice at that point is pretty easy to make. All right, I know that the ROG Ally is coming out in more markets, so let me know if you got one in the comments section down below and what your experience has been like so far. I want to give another thanks again to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video, and from there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.